the title race and what that means for the title race is absolutely huge. Arsenal lead by six points, but Man City have a game in hand. And of course, there is a game at the Etihad. So basically, Man City win their game in hand, beat Arsenal at the Etihad. They've already got the better goal difference and Arsenal would be facing second place. Are Man City favourites for the title now? I think they sort of are. Viewers, hit the like and the share button. Subscribe to the Football Terrace. This is a fan channel review show. Of course, turn on the bell notifications as well so you know when more content gets released. Today, we'll also be releasing another episode of the Top 6 Show on Spotify. So scan that QR code on the screen to get it first. Make sure you sign up to auto-downloads and give us a nice five-star review as well. Goldbridge there stating that after the draw at Anfield yesterday for Arsenal, that in his mind makes Man City the favourites for the Premier League title. What do you think to that take? Let us know in the comments section right now. I think they sort of are. And it's ridiculous that that happens because Arsenal draw at Anfield and that's that's conceded that that, that that feels like a loss because that's the intensity that Man City bring in a title race. Liverpool will know this. You know, you draw in a title race with Man City at the end and, and that they'll win. That's what they'll do. He makes a great point there, Mark. There's no doubt about it. But I think this is where Arsenal have got to remain calm. If they read into this, this, this narrative, this opinion, if they let that sink into their minds as fans, if the players think about it, they will panic and that panic will lead to more drop points. Staying calm is absolutely key. But again, I reiterate the question to you. Are Man City now the favourites? Oh! 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 Yeah! Yeah! one nil to Arsenal! Gabriel Martinelli! Look at the look at the excitement. It, this is. I'm not saying anyone played it down yesterday. A few people after the game were a bit like, oh, I didn't expect to win. I didn't get too carried away. Watch alongs always expose how people really feel. And I, I bet if you had a camera on all these people that were playing it down, this is what you would have seen. Ah, yeah! Come on! Excellent there from Curtis Shaw. So, absolutely buzzing he was. Great ball. Great ball. Ooh, ah! I used to pray for times like this. <laughs> I don't know why it's making me laugh so much. I don't know what's happening right oh now. Oh my god! You man won the league. Oh. Oh. You man won the league. I'm not too sure who that gentleman supports, but they won the league. I think a lot of people felt that at 2 0 up yesterday. <laughs> I think a lot of people felt that. Oh my, oh my god, god, it's 2 0. Oh my uh, god! Feel, where are please, Anfield? Just, please, I love you. And I swear, wait, the way there. This is the same guy who was just there. Elias, they don't want to stop. It's true. It's true. It's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought he would have stopped because yeah. of the injury. Right. Oh my god! Let's talk about, let's talk about the parade. Sweating. Let's talk about parade. the parade now, man. The parade. The parade. I mean, he can't be an Arsenal fan because he said you guys will win the league, but the parade. Ooh. Yeah, man. Where I'm sweating. Martinelli's got a goal and assist. Oh. I don't know who's it. Again, I get sent these clips. I don't know who edited them. I don't even know what's coming next. What's going to happen? Burn your parade! Burn your parade! Look at your parade! Burn your parade! You might stay in that yard. There's no parade in the... <laughs> You're staying at yard! Listen, it's cancelled. Drink your water, Arteta! Drink your water! Look at look at Chunks there. He looked gutted. They want on their phones now. Get... <laughs> Go on, delete that tweet. Delete that tweet, bro! Delete that tweet, bro! Let me see it. Yeah, jumping off the bridge. Let me picture of him. I bet I guarantee that whistle. I know they're all probably boys, yeah, but that whistle is probably going through them right now. Through them! Oh, wow. What's next? What we got? What we got? Who's next? It's over. I can't watch. I have to turn this off. Curtis. Oh, no. We've blown it. He's he's gutted. He's that energy, that energy from the first goal gone. We've apt, we've done it. And you want to bring on Kieran Tierney to all Firmino header title over for me. Title over. Title over. Come on, Curtis. You really giving up now? Title over. I'm sorry, you can't do that. It's done. 87 minutes. Trent, nutmeg Zinchenko. Why does Gabriel and 
No one marking him. Ben White, you're not marking him again. Oh, he's angry. He is angry. You're not even aware of him. What are you doing, Ben White? He's fuming there. He's fuming, as you can see. I get the anger. And I, I, I did think a few people played down their frustration yesterday. Not everybody. Some will, will feel relaxed. I think there'll, there'll be a mixture. But title over. Mm. Who believes that's true? Who believes that's true? Damn! Uh, left foot across the keeper. Yeah. He should have, yeah. I'm just dis a little bit disappointed with today's result, but... At the end of the day, we're still going to get top four. We still got to be positive. We got leads. Rory, the games are running away, mate. No, they're not running away. We still got plenty of games in hand. We got leads. Liverpool still. <laughs> they think they're getting top four. Do you know what? Let's, do you know what? These are the fans on fan channels that make our content great. And I know nowadays when people come out of outrageous takes, everyone goes, "Oh, it's just a bad take." Doing it for attention. I don't think this guy is. I think he believes it, and I love that. I love blind, blind optimism. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's next. Look at Alex's face. He's like, fuck me. Next, we're going to beat Leeds. I don't know if you will beat Leeds. You'll probably down tools again as players and drop the levels. Then after that, Nottingham Forest. We're going to beat Nottingham Forest. We're going to beat West Ham. I think it's Spurs at home after that. Yeah. Have Liverpool won three games on the bounce this year? Four, as he's suggesting. Come on. And then we're going to win them next few games and then we're going to be all, all of us look at alex's face he just <laughs> sudden we're talking about we're getting going to get third or second so we're in... Rory. oh he's gone he's, he's ended it he's ended it he's, he's we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go stop it get some help i come in here but does it feel more painful that you know because we're two new up does it feel more painful you're happy with the boys and proud of them with their performance today no, nah, definitely proud of the boys. For me, it was a game of two halves. That's yeah. all. I think the first half, we ran the show. Good football. Just got the goal early as well. Martinelli on job, just like he was when we was at the Emirates. Yeah. Got the goal, you get me? I think Granite Shaka obviously got the Liverpool fans up for it towards the, the, the end of the first half. That... I get he's proud there. Do you guys... The Xhaka situation, how are you indexing that, really? Like, on a real one, how are you indexing it? Do you really think it was Xhaka that got the crowd up and that inspired the players? Or do you think Jurgen Klopp got them at half-time, riled them up, and the team came out and put in a performance? Or a combination of the two? I'd love to get your, I'd love to get your take on that. I'm seeing a lot of people speak about it. And I really want to get your view. Is it on Xhaka? Let us know in the comments section. Let's keep it with AFTV here. Let's take a little look here. Because Carragher joined them yesterday. Big up Carragher and AFTV. And go back, you know what I mean? I just like, oh, woke in the crowd. It woke yeah, in the crowd. Tell up. Gary, he still get that champagne ready. I'm waiting for this to do it. You know what I mean? Do you know what? I've got to give Carragher props there. He's come out with some madness today about Van Dyke. We'll touch that on, on that on the space later. But Liverpool fans should be wanting Arsenal to win this league. They should be. Their main rivals in their best period in the Premier League era has been Man City. They should not be wanting. It to go 5-1 to City in their era. Not if they have any hopes of getting back to being title challengers next year. Why do you want your, your, your main rivals in this era to pull clear of you? It doesn't make sense. Arsenal not close to matching any of your records, to passing anything that you've achieved in your history. Arsenal winning it should almost be insignificant to you in the grand scheme of things. So I think he's absolutely right there. Let's take a little listen to Lee Gunner here and what he said. Where was Zinchenko? Right, and I'm not going to dig any one individual player out here, but I am going to... But you're going to dig one individual player out here. <laughs> I'm just give an honest opinion of what I see today. And I'm going to watch the game back tomorrow when I'm a little bit more calm. Right, but... Gabriel Magalhaes. I love how you... tackling at the back stick. When Salah's done nothing all cool game, he then whacks it, tries to clear it, and he got good connection on the ball. It hits... Salah in the shin goes in. Where was our where was our where was our left back? Mm. Oh, he was at centre back. Why is that? Okay, well <laughs> why is that Lee? Expand for us, Lee, my boy. Anyway, uh, if you have a look at their equalizer. <laughs> Do you see his eyes there? Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have a look at their equalizer, he got nutmegged. 
nuts by the worst right back in the league. <laughs> Lee. Lee's fuming. He's fuming. He's fuming. I was calling for Tierney to come on at half time. And as much as I like Zinchenko going forward, and like, like I said, I'm not going to just pick out individuals. I'm going to give an You just did. <laughs> but you've got to. You can't do a match review without talking about individuals. It'd be very weird. Honest assessment in this fan cam. This is what we do on this channel. We don't just cry about referees. I'm coming to him in a minute. Yeah, I'm coming to him. Don't worry. We're going to give an honest assessment. So, Tierney comes on after my man gets nutmegged and Firmino equalises. Cheers, mate. Thanks. My man, Arteta, watches Jurgen Klopp make three substitutions before making a substitution. We've seen this story before at Old Trafford. What do you guys make of that? Is he right? Did Arteta make a boo-boo yesterday in terms of his substitutions, leaving Sinchenko on for so long? Would Arsenal have won the game if TND came on at halftime, at 60 minutes, at 70 minutes? I really want you to let us know now in the comments section. Make sure like buttons are being hit and that you subscribe to the Terrace. Now, I want to attack one thing as well. This is away from Arsenal now, but just moving on to a different subject. It's, it's, it's your relation to Arsenal, but we're moving on from the game. I'm seeing a lot of Man United fans wanting Arsenal to lose this league title race and for City to win it. And I kind of tweeted about it yesterday and I essentially said you need to consider supporting another club. I'm being a little bit flippant, but because City are on for doing a treble and City are on for doing a three-peat. And, not, and, and kind of cheering them on and wanting them to beat Arsenal means they're going to equal at least one of Man United's superior records. And that's a weird thing for me because I put my club's records and achievements above banter, above rivalry, above, every, above everything. Because in, in the cold, hard light of day, football is about winning major trophies and it's about generating history and legacy. I don't want Man City equal in our legacy. The biggest reason I don't want them equal in it is not because we've done two, we've, got, we've done two three peats. They've only done one if they do it. But they then have the ability to do four on a bounce, which we have never achieved. They have the ability to win a treble amongst already having four Prems in five years, plus all the other domestic trophies. And I saw a tweet here that said that um, records are meant to be broken, banter is for the good of mankind. And this is honestly how it is now. Like, banter is more important than club records, according to a lot of people. It's crazy. And I keep seeing people say records are there to be broken, Terry. Not by your rivals. The Jamaican people would love Usain Bolt's 100-meter sprint record broken. By another Jamaican. <laughs> not, by, not by an American or a Brit or a Canadian or somebody from... Anywhere else on the planet other than Jamaica. I saw Danny Devlin in the details say the only rivalry I've adopted as a Man United fan is our shared hatred of, of, of Liverpool. I get that. They're Man United's biggest rivals. But where you are born, whether you're from London, Manchester, Singapore, Sydney, New York, Lagos, you adopt all of Man United's rivals because you're adopting the club's principles. It goes on to state, that I don't pretend to hate City. Sorry, I can't fake it. It's not about hating City, Daniel. It's about protecting Manchester United's legacy. I grew up uh, around Arsenal fans and that leg that le legendary rivalry from primary school. So, yes, City winning three in a row doesn't move me emotionally at all. And I can handle the likes of City hardcore intellectually quite easily. So it's not about handling City fans online. It isn't about banter with Arsenal fans. It's about what comes if City achieve it. And I'm telling you now, 4D chess, I'm ahead of the game. If City do a three-peat, and heaven forbid they do a treble, and if that three-peat turns into a four-peat, and these are if, buts, and maybes, by the way, but I don't even want them becoming possibilities. The mainstream media, and then all rivals, will declare this City team the greatest in Premier League history. Because rivals don't have a dog in the fight. Because the best two teams in Premier League history are Man United's 99 and 08 teams, and, their, and the eras surrounding them, their years before and after. They're the best two teams. And it's a fact, and everybody knows it. So every rival will side with City being number one and crowned number one by the media, which will then become, will be almost twisted into a, narr a narrative and fact. That will happen. 
We, they've been trying to do it for three or four years, but the lack of Champions League and they haven't matched Man United's important records in terms of total trophies or anything like that. But doing a four P and maybe throwing a treble in the mix, there's no way as a Man United fan you can be supportive of them winning it. I don't want Arsenal winning it. I don't want City winning it. But we have to, for me, as Man United fans, one of the two is going to win it this year. I don't understand this supporting and cheering and celebrating City. I think it's, we're almost cutting off our nose to spite our faces. But I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on that. I'm not trying to fan police. I'm, I'm, I'm really not. It may sound that way. I'm trying to protect my club's legacy because I put that above banter. I put it above rivalry. My club's achievements and us having records that stand out above and beyond anybody else that are comparable across eras as well. And total trophies and trophy records are the most comparable thing and the most important thing. They matter most. Listen, I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on today's show. Comments below. Scan the QR code. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Peace.